Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, here from Bologna in Italy, home to the world's oldest university and now home to Europe's greatest store of climate data. Eh, ci sono circa 700 petabyte di dati, che è un numero gigantesco. È veramente qualche cosa di incredibile, di stupefacente. That's our story coming up, but first the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, it was the warmest October on record, with temperatures 0.8 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. We can put that into perspective with this graph showing annual temperatures since 1940. 2016 is the current record holder, but 2023 is now clearly much higher, meaning we're on track for this to be the hottest year on record. October in Europe was marked by some extreme weather, with Storm Babbitt battering the UK, Germany, Denmark and France, claiming lives and causing widespread flooding. Climate scientists say that as our planet warms, we can expect heavier rainfall during these kinds of events. Warmer air can hold more moisture, so actually for every degree of warming, we see 7% increase in the amount of water that the air can hold. And so then if you think about that in terms of rainfall events, you've got more water in the system, and so you're going to have heavier rainstorms when they do occur. The rainfall from October storms is reflected in the European map of precipitation anomaly in the band of blue from the Iberian Peninsula across to Russia. Now to our report, and we're here to ask what we can learn from the past in order to better prepare for our future. Bologna is a buzzing student city, a place where Europe's greatest scientific minds have been gathering data about our planet since the Renaissance. Professor Monica Azzolini shows us around the university's Palazzo Poggi Museum. This is one of the many European collections of the 16th century that tried to put together as much information as possible about the world as they knew it. Now we rely more on numerical data, but the idea uh, is exactly the same. The idea is to make sense of the world by collecting as much information as possible about it. Today, that quest to understand the Earth and accurately predict the future continues here at the Tecnopolo di Bologna, home to Europe's climate data store. Climate scientist Susanna Corti often uses the records here. Avremo bisogno di qualche cosa per proteggerci le orecchie perché è molto rumoroso. The centre has a complete set of records dating from 1940 to today. So we basically have like the history of the world's weather and climate here. Sì, sì, esattamente. Inside the servers there's information useful for managing the impact of climate change on agriculture, cities, health and even clean energy production. Ci sono anche tanti altri settori, sia della società che dell'economia, che possono utilizzare questo tipo di dati. Per esempio sulla produzione di energia può aiutare una pianificazione di quello che saranno appunto queste grandi centrali di energia eolica oppure anche di altri tipi di energia rinnovabile come energia solare. Scientists like Susanna use the data to simulate the future of our climate. She shows us two examples of a high and low emission scenario, illustrating how warm our planet becomes if we do nothing to cut greenhouse gases. This is just an example, but all of these serve to be put together to take decisions. There are valuable lessons to be learned from the recent past in the Climate Data Store. And if we look back to our Renaissance ancestors, whose treasured works are stored here in Bologna, what can we learn from them? I think one of the lessons of the past is that they believed that the Earth was a living being and that they were part of this uh, environment and changing things could lead to uh, problems. Well, that's all we have time for here in Bologna, but you can head over to euronews.com slash climate now to see all of the data presented in this program, and I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.